Good afternoon and welcome to the Downing Street Daily Coronavirus Briefing. Uh, today I want to update you on social care, uh, something that I know is of huge importance to everybody watching. And I'd also like to welcome David Pearson to the press conference in his new role as chair of our national COVID-19 social care support task force. Before turning to social care though, uh, I'd like to take you through the latest coronavirus data. And if we turn now to the first slide. The first slide shows the number of new cases confirmed in the UK and also shows the level of testing. There were 138,183 tests done uh, yesterday, bringing the total to over 5.7 million. And as you can see in this chart, the number of confirmed cases, confirmed with a positive test, yesterday was 1,205, and that is the lowest since the end of March. Uh, and you can clearly see the seven-day rolling average also continuing to fall. Next slide, please. The data from hospitals also shows a continued fall. Uh, the number of admissions with COVID-19 across England, Wales and Northern Ireland has fallen again to 519. Uh, that's down from 661 a week ago. So we can see the continued downward trend in the total number of new daily admissions. And the number of people on mechanical ventilators in the UK as a whole is also falling and is now 516. Next slide, please. Here in this chart, we can see the number of people in hospital with COVID-19 on a regional basis. And I know there's been a lot of interest in the regional R figure in recent days. The estimate of SAGE taking into account all of the evidence is that R is below one in all regions. And we can see in this chart that in all areas, the number of people in hospital with coronavirus is falling in all regions, faster in some areas than in others. Um, and it is on that downward trajectory uh, in each individual case. And the total number of people in hospital is 6,403, which is down from over 7,500 uh, this time last week. If we turn now to the final slide, the number of deaths from coronavirus with a positive test yesterday was 55. And that recorded figure is the lowest since the 21st of March. Now, these data do tend to be lower at weekends. So we do expect that figure to rise again in future. But you can see also that the seven-day rolling average continues to fall. Uh, and that means that the total number of deaths stands at 40,597. And as I've said in the House just now, though the number is much lower than it has been, each of these deaths still represents a tragedy for a family and a community. And we will continue all of our work to drive that figure down. I'm glad to be able to report also that the number of deaths recorded in London hospitals yesterday was zero. And likewise, in Scotland, there were no recorded deaths. So that is very good news for the capital and for Scotland. And all of these data are pointing in the right direction. And it shows that we are winning the battle with this disease, but they also show that there's further to go. If I now turn to um, uh, care homes, the number of people dying in care homes is also falling. Figures from the CQC show that there's a 79% fall from the peak of the crisis in care homes, the week ending April the 24th. Uh, to the week ending the 29th of May, the latest when the data is available. And um, the latest ONS data show that there were 12,739 registered deaths in care homes in the year up to the 22nd of May. And this represents 
90% of all registered COVID deaths. From the earliest days of this crisis, we recognized that people in social care were uniquely vulnerable. Two thirds of people in residential care are over the age of 85. And the latest data from Public Health England show that the over 80s are 70 times, 70, 70 times more likely to die from coronavirus than the under 40s. So I know personally what an anxious time it is, and it has been, for anyone with a loved one in social care. Right from the start, we've given guidance and financial support to care homes. We've prioritised testing. We've strengthened the links between the NHS and social care with a named clinical lead in, for every care home in England. And we've asked councils to conduct daily reviews of the situation on the ground. And the Social Care COVID-19 Support Task Force, which David will be chairing, will oversee delivery of the next phase of our plan for social care, ensuring that care homes have the support, the training, the resources they need to control this virus. Crucially, this includes working with the care system to develop a plan for keeping staff and residents safe in the months after, as the lockdown measures are eased. Now, uh, David Pearson brings a wealth of experience in public health and in social care, so I'm very glad to have him on board, and he's perfect for the role of driving this forward over the weeks and months ahead. I also want to say a word about testing. Last month, I announced that all residents and staff of elderly care homes in England would receive a test by early June, regardless of whether they had symptoms or not. And I want to thank my team and those colleagues in social care who've delivered that target on time on Saturday. We've now sent over a million test kits to almost 9,000 elderly care homes. And the care homes themselves ask that they have the flexibility to do the test when it works for them. And the good news is that the test results so far do not show a significant rise in the number of positive cases, despite going through and testing all of the residents and staff. Throughout the crisis, we've been rapidly testing any care home with an outbreak or any care home resident or staff member with symptoms. And as we built up testing capacity, we prioritised testing of care homes for the elderly, making sure that every resident and staff member could be tested, whether or not they had symptoms, and the reason we did this is because the evidence shows that age is by far the greatest risk factor. We'll now make sure that we do all of this in working age care homes as well. So I can announce that from today, all remaining adult care homes in England will be able to order the whole care home testing service for residents and staff. This service will benefit residents and staff in over 6,000 more care homes It'll mean that right across adult social care, everyone will have the certainty and confidence of a high quality coronavirus test, whether symptomatic or not. Certainty about whether or not they're carrying the virus and confidence that they're doing the right thing both to protect themselves and others. But finally, this is Carers Week. And I want to say a heartfelt thanks to each and every carer, whether paid or unpaid, for all the work that they're doing to support family and friends and loved ones, especially in this time of crisis. Your duty and your devotion to a job that you do with love in incredibly challenging circumstances, they're a huge inspiration as we work through this crisis together. I understand what a worrying time it is and it's not just because of the risk of the virus, but because you haven't physically been able to be with your loved ones. But that day, when we can reunite, is getting closer. The curve continues to come down. The NHS has been protected. Our vaccine development work is making progress. We're winning the battle against coronavirus. So please, stay alert, control the virus, and save lives.